Hey everyone, Logan Hertz with Hazeltine, uh, back again, still recovering from surgery, but I'm soldiering through this. And I have uh, the man, the myth, the legend, DeAndre Clayton with me. We're super excited to have him back. Uh, DeAndre, how you doing? Oh man, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm happy to be back, uh, man. And I'm I'm happy to see you. Hopefully your recovery is coming along fairly decent. You know, uh, the, the world, the landscape needs a Logan around here, man. We love your voice <laughs> out here. <laughs> that depends who you ask. That depends who you ask. Um, so we brought DeAndre back to respond to a few comments we got, which uh, thank you for the comments, everyone who engages with my videos. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, I'm not really the expert on velocity banking. I, I believe in it. I know enough to be dangerous. Uh, I educate people on it, but uh, I like to bring in others who I feel are more qualified to answer questions than myself. So um, I will post this in the description, but we're responding to some uh, negative comments we got on uh, one of the first Lean HELOC videos, which by the way, negative comments are fine. I always appreciate people engaging with my content. And um, I hope whoever posted those comments takes this as a compliment that we are taking the time to respond to your comments. Um, if we didn't think your comments were valuable, we would not take the time to respond to them. So we do appreciate your input and feedback. Your comments are valuable. We take them seriously, and we're going to attempt to respond to them and use them as an opportunity to educate our audience further. So this is on the first link HELOC video, and I'm just going to read the comments, and then we'll go through and see how far we get. There is a lot here to go through uh, in terms of addressing these, right? Mm -hmm. So here's what the commenter says. Uh your premise that the mortgage uses amortized interest versus the HELOC using simple interest is factually incorrect. Amortized interest doesn't exist. There is simple interest and compound interest. Mortgages and HELOCs calculate interest the same way. Search the internet to verify what I have said is true. Okay, I'll stop there. Uh, so what he's saying is there's no such thing as amortized interest. And he's saying mortgages and HELOCs calculate interest the same way. You want to address that? DeAndre? Um, okay. Um, so uh, one, I, I kind of understand where he's going uh, from us, but it is quite semantic. Um, what I would like to really first discuss, because I think people don't understand this about interest when they make certain comments like this, is that um, interest has a frequency, right? And um, if you, and my background is electronic engineering. So frequency uh, in, in electronic engineering is one divided by time, right? Uh, so when you understand that component and you say, okay, well, there's no such thing as amortization or there's only simple or there's only compound, you really realize that time is the main variable as to how long, you know, whatever type of interest is calculated and how it actually works, right? So uh, for instance, in the insurance industry, we talk about a simple daily annual calculation, right? Now, the concept of simple interest is real, but it's real for a time period. So uh, for instance, you know, if you had an insurance loan and it went past a year, obviously it would compound on top of itself. <laughs> Right. Um, especially if you didn't pay the interest. So um, when we hear statements like this, uh, I really want people to think a little bit deeper in reference to it, because you have to understand that interest is very time based. Now, number two, when we talk about, well, how is it calculated? Um, is it calculated similar to a mortgage? Uh, is a HELOC calculated different than a mortgage? Yes, it is. And the answer is based on time. When is the calculation formed, right? So with the HELOC, you have a situation where you have your simple annual daily calculation of the present month. With a mortgage, you have a uh, interest calculation that is based on the previous imbalance of the last month. Now, why is that something that, you know, we would count and say, well, yeah, that's what makes it different. Well, the reason why is because that's how they use um, the calculation in order to decide what your monthly payment actually is on a uh, mortgage, right? A HELOC's payment is not static, 
Because if you're flowing income through it over and over and over and over again, obviously the monthly interest payment is going to change a lot because it can't charge you the exact same thing because there is no schedule to a HELOC payment. Amortization means that there is a schedule. Therefore, when you hear somebody say that it's amortized interest, they are referring to what is the schedule, 30 years, 15 years, whatever that schedule is, and how the interest has been pre-decided, which you would see on your truth and lending document. Uh, when you actually look at your, your loan document, it will tell you what is the pre-decision of that interest. Now, can you lessen that pre-decided interest? Of course you can. However, what you can't get away from is the monthly payment being due in the month. So case in point, let's say you are a person who says, okay, well, my mortgage is $2,000, right? Okay, so my mortgage is $2,000. I make a principal payment, principal only payment throughout that month of $10,000. Logan, would you no longer have a mortgage payment? No, you still have to make that required <laughs> mortgage payment, which includes a large chunk of interest. Which is still includes the schedule of interest. Now, the only way to change that schedule of interest is a process called recasting, right? So if you were to recast your mortgage, which is not something that people do traditionally every single month, some banks don't allow it every single month, and some banks charge you a decent fee, uh, for trying to recast the mortgage on a regular basis. Um, so, and then that's additional money that just went out if you're being realistic because you, you're paying them to try to change whatever the schedule is. Um, now, of course, it can, it can change the schedule, but it's not changing necessarily the fact that you do have a mortgage payment because your mortgage payment was decided last month. It was decided last month, not this month. Last month it was decided, right? So if we were to say, oh, it's calculated the same, the only time you would say that a HELOC and a mortgage are calculated exactly the same is if you wipe out the principal balance totally in a given month, right? Which is the same for every uh, interest debt that you have. Uh, so for instance, with a credit card, credit cards are compound interest, right? But most people who are responsible, they pay their credit card balance at the end of a month. They pay it all off. Well, if you pay it all off, was it compound interest? Was it simple interest? What was it? It wasn't simple it was or no compound. Interest. It was no interest. <laughs> it was compounding on a zero, which is still zero. Yeah. There's no so interest, right? Is there a concise way to just define simple interest? amortized interest and compound interest, those three different ways of charging interest. So so simple interest in, in layman's terms, simple interest means that the interest does not charge interest on itself, right? And so that is not necessarily, I, I remember watching, I think it was Caleb Williams, he had a guy on there and he made a very interesting point in regards to this. Um, there is no such thing as infinite simple interest. So, you know, you can have simple interest, but you will have it for a time period, right? So it'll be a year of simple interest. If it's daily simple interest, if it's monthly simple interest, you don't have forever simple interest, right? So, um, so that is just not a real concept. So what you're saying is if it charges simple interest for a year, Mm -hmm. At the end of that year, if you have not made any payments and you have not <laughs> paid the interest, then that interest gets added to the principal balance. And then it Correct. does become compound, we might Correct. say. Right? Correct. But if you pay the interest over the course of that year, it never gets added to the principal. And it never gets added to the principal. Correct. Correct. So, so for instance, and if you pay the balance, obviously there's nothing at all to, you know, charge at that point, right? Um, now, compound is obviously, um, and this is why I mentioned time in the beginning, because compound is heavily based on what is the frequency of the payment, right? So uh, for instance, if you 
you know, if you're going to have normally a compound interest, the reason why they compound is because they shorten the frequency of the payment. So I need a payment every month, right? Because if I said, you know, if, if you want to be semantic about it, an insurance loan is a compounding loan if it's a two-year loan, right? <laughs> like if you, you want to no payments, if you make, yeah, no, if payments, you make no payments, payments, if you want to be semantic about it, it would be a compounding loan if it existed longer than a year and you paid nothing. On it, right. Um, so what normally you would have from a creditor standpoint and from an interest standpoint is when you have compound interest, you normally would have shorter intervals because there would be no reason to charge compound interest if it took forever to get the money. Right. If it took forever for it to compound. So um, so that's just another aspect of it. Right. Um, what you're saying is with a credit card. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay the principal in full. At the end of the month, that time period. The interest is now added to your balance and becomes compounding. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So. I'm trying to get rid of that little sound thing. Coming so up. like you said, it now charges interest on the interest. Correct. Because that interest has become interest part on of the interest, principal. Right? So now the next thing would be, okay, well, I have, um, I have amortized interest. Now, amortized interest, what it actually is, is because they pre-decided the schedule, they're basically showing a priority of where the interest is going. So for instance, if you're in a mortgage loan, about 70% of the loan um, for a time period will be you know, going towards the interest. So when you make your monthly payment, it was $1,000, about $300 is going towards principal, about 700 is going towards the interest. That's normally what's gonna happen. Well. Well, when a person tries to interrupt that, right, so they make a principal payment, they do biweekly payments, they do all of that kind of stuff. That's wonderful. All good and well. It still doesn't change that particular schedule, though. Right now, it shortens the time period of that schedule because you have a lower balance, but that lower balance is still based on percentages, right? So you will still pay that same payment that you're paying. <laughs> And it's still going to be on that same basis of the 70, 30 for at least the first 12 years or so. And then it's going to move into, OK, well, now we're going to give you maybe a 50 50 split on how the interest versus the uh, actual you know, principal is working. Right. Um, so, yes, it is a scheduled conversation, but a scheduled conversation is the same across the board. Rather, it's simple interest, the schedule is a year on the simple interest, or the schedule is whatever on its time period, um, but it's not telling you how much you actually have to pay. Um, and so that would, and I, I guess it would be incorrect to call it a schedule because it's not making you actually pay that schedule. It's not enforcing a schedule. Now, you would see that on compound interest, where if you have a minimum due on a credit card, it will tell you exactly how much that minimum due is, but then it's going to add on top of that into the next month as well, and now redo that schedule, so to speak, once again. Um, but you can definitely avoid all of the consequences or most of the consequences of compound. You can avoid um, really having to pay that much on a simple when you're talking about an amortized loan, the only way to avoid the schedule is to pay the entire thing off. And if you're talking about three or four hundred thousand dollars on a mortgage, the likelihood of that is not that high in comparison to paying off twelve hundred dollars on a credit card in comparison to paying off anything else that you're monthly doing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. OK. Uh Let's move on with his comment. He says, second, you can make extra payments to the principal on a mortgage at any time. That will actually reduce the interest part of your next payment. Okay, that's true. Um, but as we discussed, you still have that required payment. 
works. Of was, which a large percentage is going to be interest. And in, was there something you want to say that DeAndre? Yeah, that I mean, that's that's. I agree. You can make an additional payment, but as you were saying, you're still going to pay the schedule. You There's don't get pay around it. Right. So I, I did a um because I think it will be good uh to show this. This is um just a calculator based on me showing the difference between a, a person who's paying double the mortgage versus a person who's doing the HELOC, right? Okay, great. So what we're showing here is making extra payments to principal on a mortgage mm -hmm. versus using a, a first position HELOC. Right. So so now velocity the, banking. Yeah. the extra payment you see is $1,700, right? So the mortgage payment is if you're including all the escrow, $1,841, right? So if we make that extra payment, let's just see how much is actually going towards the principal. It's $2,063.27, right? Now, hold on now. Um, it's calculated exactly the same, <laughs> Oh, the interest payment is decided by the previous month. The amount that you are actually paying on the mortgage uh, principal and the balance, the cumulative interest, yes, it's shortening it. That is for sure. But it's not shortening the fact that you actually sent that large of a payment. Right? So let me explain that a little bit better. When you look at this, your minimum monthly payment went to $3,541.44. A person did not send $1,700 directly to the principal and didn't have to send another payment at all. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Right. Like, you know, yeah. so so could it work? Yes. Is it is it better than doing nothing? Yes. I can definitely agree with that. Is it for everyone? No. It's not for everyone. Um, and, and, it's, and as we're about to show, if you have the discipline to do velocity banking, it's still less efficient than the alternate strategy we're about to show. Now, and, and I'm going to touch on why it's less efficient, because sometimes, you know, and I'm a numbers guy. I, I love numbers, you know, but there is intangibles. How does it feel to live with paying double a mortgage versus paying, you know, or using your income to flow through a HELOC, right? There, there is a, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. Here's the big difference. All right. Well, if his minimum monthly payment is $3,541.44 and he has $3,000 of expenses on top of that, well, you know, he's got the difference to work with to try to handle everything else in his life, his investing, his saving, is <laughs> not to mention the fact that when you make that additional principal payment, you can't pull it back. You just you lost can't pull it back. To your money. You just lost access to that money. You gave it to the bank and it's gone. Whereas when you pay down the HELOC, if you needed that money for some emergency or for some great investment opportunity, you could pull it back out if you needed to. You don't lose access to your money. Yeah, yeah. Very and and I think that's the part that most people because they think about, oh, it's just paying the house off. And that's their only thought. They lose sight of the other aspects that happen in life that occur. Or when, oh, the housing market, you know, the bubble burst and uh, all of these people have to get out of their homes, but you're sitting with cash. You have availability of cash to be able to use to buy a house dirt cheap, right? <laughs> you know, you, you're the one who, who actually can be king in this situation. If you're paying double your mortgage payment, it won't work, right? If you have a HELOC, it's very different, which is why there's some investors, uh, and there's even some financial advisors who tell people, keep a 30-year mortgage because you're allowed to invest more. Because they're thinking about, well, you're locking up money. They're not right. telling you to pay double your mortgage because they're saying, right. no, like if there's an opportunity for you to take, you know, a benefit of when things are low, then you should 
buy low and sell high or whatever else they want to teach, right? right. Um, stay liquid and improve your cash flow. Stay so liquid. You reduce your monthly payment. Yeah. It, it, it's hilarious. I've seen, um, I seen a, a, a Dave Ramsey video very recently, and there was a guy who took his advice on paying his house off, but he went to the furthest end because you know how, how uh, opposed to debt Dave Ramsey is, right? So, so this guy actually pays off $200,000 of debt on his house. He pays it completely off in like a year and a half, two years. He's calling up there because he has no money and he wants to get a tractor. And he's asking Dave, hey, um, do you think I should refi? Do you think I should get a loan for maybe 50 grand for a good tractor? And Dave was like, why would you go into debt? <laughs> <laughs> and to me, I'm like, well, if he did principal payments of 200,000, he's not in debt to the same extent that an average person who's in a mortgage would be in. Like he's he's got a lot of money that he cleared off and it wouldn't even cost him that much to use it to facilitate him being able to do whatever he wanted to do with that tractor as an investment. Um, but that's the person that the HELOC targets. If you're a person who really thinks that you have um, just the financial, um, not only education, but you have the, the wherewithal to say, I can pay $5,000, $3,000, $4,000 more on my mortgage every month without ever touching it. And I don't care about any opportunities that come up. I don't care about hospital bills that come up. Fine, pay extra to your mortgage, right? But that's not the likely person. People have children that are growing up. They got all types of stuff happening. And so, you know, if you're qualified for a first lien HELOC, you can handle all of those things and still pay the property down quickly. Right. Which is which is, I think, the the best caveat to it. You can create income. Uh, people don't create incomes off of their own mortgage. They don't do that. <laughs> they don't do that. But. Yeah. So keep going with your little illustration here. Um, in, in reference to. OK, so here, just to kind of give you an update. So this, again, we're showing you why it's still yeah. more efficient. You can make extra principal payments to Absolutely. a mortgage. That's true. But Absolutely. it's still less efficient than the first lien HELOC method. And we're showing you why. Absolutely. So in this illustration, what you're seeing is, okay, they purchased the home. And this is a real client that came to me, right? So I want to make sure that's clear. This is a real case. Purchased the home. It was 181000 when they refied it. It was 181000 left on it, right? So the house is actually worth far more than 181,000, but they refied it at 3%, right? Now they didn't take any money out at that time, but they refied it for a 30 year mortgage and they got, and they're continuing to pay extra payments on it of 1700, right? Now, when we looked at their situation, currently they're at 168,000. Cause if you look at the months, you can tell they had that refi for some time right for a couple years so um currently they're at one hundred and sixty-eight thousand. i'm showing them a 7.5 but this family makes ten thousand dollars a year net now when you see this average monthly expenses and this is where the difference between the mortgage and the heloc come into place your mortgage is no longer a monthly expense it's no longer a fixed expense how much it costs for you to live in your house is no longer a fixed expense in a HELOC, it's a variable expense. Depends on how much cash you made. So if you're a person who makes bonuses, $20,000 drop in there, boom. You know, there's principal that disappears and your interest drops drastically. Um, then you have your average monthly expenses being the 3,000 after the mortgage. So now we can just focus on the monthly expenses only, right, in the HELOC. Now, we got the homeowner's insurance and the taxes, and those numbers are the same across the board, uh, rather you're in the HELOC or the mortgage. That's not going to change unless you go to Logan and he points you to Costco or something. 
but <laughs> but um as you go on you'll notice that this person is on track for paying the house off in 2.33 years as opposed to 6.67 now here's the aspect that i really want to highlight remember the expenses were 36,000 per year because it's $3,000 a month right your mortgage payment on the left side does not take into consideration those expenses at all. I repeat, when you see these numbers on the left side, when you see $199,787.71, and you see this 6.67 years, which you're doing double the mortgage payment, you are not seeing anything in relation to what is going on with that $36,000 that you're spending per year on your expenses, right? Now, in this example, it already makes room for it. It's already calculated into the loan, right? Because that's what you're doing. You're banking out of the HELOC. Uh, that is a big difference. <laughs> it's a big difference when we talk about it because a lot of people kind of dodge that and, and think, oh, well, the numbers are close. From a loan perspective, it seems like the numbers are close. They're not really that close because this includes you actually using $36,000 a year. And it's doing that for 2.33 years. This one doesn't and is doing it for 6.67 years. So if you were to say in 6.67 years and multiply it times that $36,000 number, there's $240,120 that is unaccounted for in the financial picture on the left side. There really is. On the right side, it is already accounted for, right? Uh, it's already in your financial ecosystem. And these numbers are based on what you're spending from that standpoint. So that's the intangible that I think a lot of people don't think about when, when they think about the HELOC. Average monthly cash flow savings from the first lien HELOC is over $3,000 a month. You're saving $3,000 a month. Mm -hmm. and you're paying off the house in less than two and a half years instead of more than six and a half years. Mm -hmm. Right. So this again shows the difference between making additional principal payments on an existing amortized 30-year mortgage, which you can do versus using the first lien HELOC method. And we are, of course, not only looking at the greater efficiency of payments, but also the psychological impact, um, how, how much easier it is, because this is all automated. Mm -hmm. You're not consciously making any payments at all. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is running your cash flow through a different checking account that's tied to your HELOC, right? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing for you to do consciously. That's what's so great about it. Nothing for you to do. Nothing for you to do. Uh, now, and and that part about the emotional aspect, I'll, I'll tell you, Logan, I had a client who he uh, he's in the tech industry or he was in the tech industry, makes like 180 a year, right? Put him in the HELOC and he lost his job two months later. He had a lot of the property already paid off anyways when he when he got into the HELOC, uh, but he ended up having to pay the minimum monthly payment to hold himself over until he actually got a job. Now, let's go back to the double mortgage example. Lose a job. What happens? You're not paying extra. You're not making that double payment anymore. You're not making double the payment right? Not only are you not making double the payment, you're probably, if you haven't handled your finances right, I haven't seen too many people who had an emergency funds that was sufficient. Many people are not doing well in that regard. The average American is not doing well in that regard, um, especially if they have higher income. The higher the income, the higher the emergency fund needs to be. <laughs> right, right. So, so now you get into a situation where you definitely are going to have to cut expenses. That's a given because you don't have a job anymore, right? Um, but 
now you still have to pay that 1700 So all of that extra payment that you were putting in did nothing to change the situation when your situation changed. Mm. Right. Um, yeah. And, and I believe the minimum, in, uh, minimum interest payment, you also don't have to make that out of pocket. What happens oh. is it's automatically taken from the equity in the home and it's never payment. missed. So it happens automatically. So again, you're not even having to consciously make that minimum payment if you have no income, right? Yep. Meanwhile, to your point, DeAndre, you have access to a large pile of equity in your home. So should something like this happen, now you can tap that liquidity to tide you over while you find that next job. Or of course, if a great investment opportunity comes up, you can tap it to go and make a down payment on a rental property or whatever investment opportunity you see, you have liquidity to go and to go and get it. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that is invaluable for a person, right? For, for him to not have to make a payment and just focus on his job and be sitting on $400,000 of equity, it made him feel invincible, even though he was in a bad place. And, and, and that's one thing I like to focus on is, you know, life isn't ran on a spreadsheet, people. This idea of you paying double the mortgage payment, there are not too many people who actually get across the finish line doing that in the same time periods projected because most of them won't pay double the mortgage payment consecutively for that time period. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. You know, your kids are going to go to school. You need to save for their schooling. You, you, you get sick. If your insurance doesn't cover it, what are you doing? You know? Right. And if you're and even if you do have the wherewithal to make those additional principal payments, is that the most efficient, effective use of your free cash flow to pay down a mortgage where now you can you permanently lose access to that capital, basically? Not right? at all. You're just giving it to the bank. Um, and yeah, now there's some reduction in interest you're going to pay over the life of the mortgage. OK, but what could you have done with that money? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And here's another thing that uh, we didn't even touch on. Is the loan new? All right. So if the loan is new and you start off the loan with PMI, um, yeah, that's calculated differently. <laughs> PMI, is, PMI doesn't go towards interest or principal, uh, folks. So when you're when you're making the statements, understand that there's so much context that needs to be provided for your answer to be correct. And hopefully um, it helps you to be a little bit more introspective about the situation. And even what does it feel like to live with one of these? Um, I've had clients who call me uh, after they get into a first lien HELOC and they are elated about their experience because they are happy to feel their cash flow coming back to them and actually seeing the number drop very quickly without even having changed that much of their habits, right? We're not asking you to make more money to do it. Now, I want you to make more money. That's true. But most of the time, it's just, an, it's just making sure that you fit based on your, your principles. And, and here's one thing I also want to say um, as well. First lien HELOCs are not easy to qualify for. Um, this is a conversation me and Logan were just having about insurance. Um, insur life insurance is not a right. It is a privilege. A first lien HELOC is a privilege, not a right. Um, that is why you are underwritten so closely when you have these types of vehicles, because the bank understands that it is not a loan that benefits them that much. So what happens? Well, the credit score needs to be higher. The debt to income ratio needs to be lower, right? And they're taking a really, really close look at that as opposed to if you bought a mortgage, it's a lot easier to get qualified for a mortgage, right? Uh, because the goal of a mortgage is not for you to pay it off. I've never seen a mortgage loan officer who was like, man, you know, you're going to have this thing paid off in 30 years. <laughs> You know, um, if you've ever signed for a mortgage, you probably noticed that your process is flip here, flip here, flip here, flip here, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here. You're not going through like 
if you're talking about first lien HELOC, they want you to meet with the doggone financial advisor first to pre-qualify. Yeah, you, you're, you're right. It's the emphasis is on educating the customer, yeah. not sign here and pay us, yeah. but make sure you understand this product so that you can use it properly, right? Educate you, underwrite you. And you're right. It definitely is harder to qualify for a first lien yeah. HELOC than a conventional mortgage and yeah. I, it's funny i was talking to anthony rushing who, who who manages a lot of the first thing heloc stuff yeah. and he was talking about how yeah they we definitely have a more involved process but the flip side is they have much better borrowers right Absolutely. Um, because the borrowers are not only more financially responsible just in terms of better credit score and so on Absolutely. but much more importantly they're better educated because Absolutely. The vast majority of their clients come through ambassadors like you and me who educate the clients on the process and how to properly leverage it. So when people get first thing HELOCs, I mean, the amount of like late or missed payments, pretty much zero. It's it's, 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 probably, it's, it's like pretty much unheard of. It's right? non-existent. Um, yeah. yeah. So, and it has to be that way for the bank, to your point, yeah. because uh, this is a much less profitable product than a mortgage yeah. for the bank. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you look at the um, like in talking once again with Anthony, um, they've had one foreclosure since 2014. I don't know if you guys understand this, but traditional or regular mortgages, the 30 year mortgages have actually had over 100 and 100,000 foreclosures just in the first quarter of last year. Well, why is that? It's because of the underwriting. If you are not responsible, you can still qualify for a mortgage. If you are not responsible, it is very unlikely to qualify <laughs> for a first lien HELOC. So, you know, you know. And you will have gone through an exercise like what DeAndre and I are going through right now. Absolutely. Right. And when you take out a conventional mortgage, I mean, I've taken it before. You're not going to get anywhere don't near this level of education. No. You know, uh, no. this is like, this is really helpful to people. I think whether they decide to take the first, one of the okay. things I love is that with infinite banking, with velocity banking, when I'm talking to people, even some who decide not to go this route, they always are thankful that, for the education. That you, that you they should. always come away and say, thank you. I learned a lot. Like this yeah. was really helpful. Maybe they decide it's not for them, but they learned a lot. Right. Yeah. With most other financial products, they want you to think it's too complicated for you to understand. So leave it to the experts. Yeah. Or they want you to only know, think it's super simple, like with a mortgage here, you, your monthly payment. That's all you need to know. Make your monthly payment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and it's what it is, is um, the sales cycle that we've been taught, everybody across the board who has ever been in sales has been keep it simple, stupid. So that concept of keep it simple, stupid, really is assuming that the client can't be astute enough to right. handle more detailed analysis and say, yes, this makes sense to me. What that concept says is that if you get into the details, everybody will be confused. Mm -hmm. That's what sales training teaches you. You get into the details, everybody get confused. I remember when I first started uh, in the industry and, and um, helping individuals with their pension analysis and everything, I would actually draw out exactly how I got to the figures for the client. And I would I would show them the analysis. And um, the team that I was working with said, hey, man, you ain't got to do all that. Just tell them if they work 30 years, it'll be somewhere around half. And I said, it works, trust me, somewhere around half, right? And I'm just not geared that way. Like if if I'm a person looking at something, you don't just tell me somewhere around half. How do you get there to somewhere? Right. Around, you know? right. Um, right. And so we're, we're not just teaching financial education. What we're doing is asking you to think. Don't, don't just try. Most people think. don't want yeah. to do yeah don't, don't trust this so hey. so what ends up happening is i think similar to the anthony talking about the first thing he lost they get fewer borrowers for sure Whoa. but they get much higher quality 
Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And it's the same thing with what we do with infinite banking and velocity banking. We are going to get fewer clients because Absolutely. this is not for everybody. This is not a lowest common denominator product. You need to be working with someone who's financially responsible, who wants to take control of their finances and who is willing to learn uh, about these things. Right. And doesn't want to just hey, give me the bottom line quick. Let's get it done. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that requires a certain type of person. So we end up with fewer clients, mm -hmm. but it's a much higher quality relationship. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so, book so we got through, uh, we're, we're reaching the end of our time. We got through like two, totally. sentences, two or three sentences in his yeah. comments. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, is, is there anything else there in, in his comments? That we need oh to... yeah, no, we got plenty more to go through. We got plenty more to go through. We'll have to do this. We'll make this a series. This will be part one. All right, all right. We we can this will be part one. We can yeah. Definitely... So we got through about three sentences, and it'll be. We'll get through a few more. Well, let's see. We got three minutes left. This is now. He's just going to engage in the obligatory name calling. So I'll just read this last. So we'll get through the first full yeah. comment. Here That's he says. Not necessary. So he says, third, interest rate definitely matters. Higher interest rate results in higher interest costs. Sorry, that is just how math works. Agreed. Nobody is saying the interest rate doesn't matter. It's just it's not the only factor. There are multiple factors. Yeah, agreed. Interest rate is important. Lower the interest rate, the better, all things being equal. All other things are not equal, though. So, yeah, um, interest rate yeah. does matter. We're not saying it's irrelevant. We're just saying it's one of multiple factors, is not the only one. And then Time he says... The biggest factor. <laughs> Balance. Then he says, lastly, stop shilling this rechecked script that all velocity banking content creators use. The information you present is factually incorrect, and people who follow it will be financially harmed. If you want to help people, please educate yourself on how the dynamics of money and loans work, then provide factually correct information and strategies to people. Thanks. Okay. Well, that was totally unnecessary, but um, I'll just let that <laughs> I'll let that comment. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Yeah, and 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 let me touch on that too because I think um, once again, think outside of the loan, right? Think conceptually because if you say that a person's going to be in financial ruin, I want to ask you this: Do you know how much they have in credit card debt? Right. Let's say that person moves that credit card debt over to the first lien HELOC. The credit card debt is charging twenty one to 29% a month compact interest, right? Well, aren't they already in financial ruin? And if you're moving it to a place that will charge them 7.5%, and it's not even an even 7.5% because the fluctuation of the principal is changing so much, how is it equaling financial ruin? So, you have to think conceptually because if you are just a spreadsheet person, you may say, I'm just thinking about the house in the house. No, a lot of people have more than just house debt. If you look at the U.S. debt clock, a lot of people have more than house debt. They have house debt. They have car debt. They have credit card debt. They have student loan debt. They have personal loan debt. They have small business credit debt. So, so what if they're using a HELOC to cover that? Is that financial ruin? If they right. you gotta it, think, you gotta think big they picture. Right. From 29 to, to seven. You, you can't you can't be myopically focused on interest rate as if the, that's the only right. thing that matters. And you can't be myopically focused on just paying down the mortgage if that's the only thing that matters. You have to look at it as part of the big picture. And what we're doing with velocity banking is paying down the house in a more efficient manner, but it does yeah. a lot more than that. It's a much more efficient cash flow management tool, and you can refinance a lot of your higher interest rate debt into the first lien HELOC and free up a bunch of cash flow yeah. and pay it down a lot faster. And that's yeah. part of a broader strategy. But yeah, we've reached the end of our time. Uh, we will we will continue on this. There's more to go through with this guy, but I think simple interest versus amortized interest versus compound interest. That uh, I think is a good topic. It's a good question that he brought up. And I think it's yeah, it's a yeah. subtle distinction that is important for people to understand. And it's not it's not the easiest thing to understand. Right? Yeah. And stop being disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, we'll come to that later. It's it's just it's unfortunate that we can't we cannot have a professional disagreement it, on a financial. It's okay strategy. to disagree. We don't have to we don't have to call each other names or anything like that. I think I saw your last video 
And um, I will say. Oh, thank you, thank you. I your last it. video, your last video, I maybe it was the bad part of me, but I really liked, <laughs> especially when he called him a jabroni. I was cracked. <laughs> but <laughs> but negative energy begets negative energy. We can get to a resolve if we just talk calmly and discuss what the stuff is. I'm, I'm going to be frank with you. I don't believe a lot of advisors are trying to do bad things to people. No, no, I, I don't believe that think, either. I don't believe I that. I think either. oftentimes it's just an ignorance. It's just maybe they've been indoctrinated in a certain way. And with that indoctrination, they haven't been able to really, really be able to think outside of it. And therefore they end up hurting people that they didn't mean to hurt. Right. Right. And um, we'll have to leave it there because I, so. I got to, I got to jump to my next call, but DeAndre, thank you so much for your time. We'll continue this in our thank next you, one. My man. Thank DeAndre you, man. Clayton of Clayton Financial Solutions. Thanks so much. Rest Bye -bye. up and get better, my friend.